Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture. Today we're going to learn about uh, uh, evapotranspiration, how you can um, um, access and um, generate a time series uh, plot of um, uh, mode 16 data. So mode 16 is um, um, evap evapotranspiration uh, data set um, based on um, a mode 60 product. It's an eight day data. Uh, this is um, uh, LPDAC, uh, uh, NASA USGS uh, Data Archive. Uh, so the data is um, called Terra Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroautometer. Mode is uh, Mode 16A2 version 6.1. Okay, so this data uh, provides um, evapotranspiration of the land surface, uh, um, evaporation uh, from the uh, water surface or, as well as transpiration from uh, plants or vegetation so it's a pretty um, uh, useful data set for most um, you know drought monitoring or water resource or agriculture to quantify um, evaporation from from the land surface um, it's a um, eight day composite that means uh, it's um, uh, providing estimate for uh, about nearly a week's um, you know uh, time stamp and also a 500 meter spatial resolution. So each pixel is uh, 500 meter. Um, so this you can you can find information or documentation about this data by using um, by logging um, uh, accessing LPDAC USGS, uh, which is a NASA USGS collaboration. But if you want to access this data on Earth Engine, let's just get started. How you can um, um, create this data. Uh, let me uh, first um, delete my uh, original of interest. That way we can we can uh, get started. So I've already uh, written a sample code here, but uh, I'll just um, activate each of these um, to kind of test run that. So if you're new to Ars Engine, um, Ars Engine is uh, um, cloud competing for geospatial data analysis on the cloud. Um, you need to have Earth Engine account to to run this. Uh, if you don't, if you're new to Earth Engine, just go to googleearthengine.com and then sign up for a, an account for educational or research purpose to get a free account. If you have Earth Engine account, disregard that. All right, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing is um, uh, we um, need to have um, a study site. So what we're gonna do here is. We'll just um, you know download this um, data set, which is uh, evapotranspiration data from the Earth Engine our data archive, and then we'll generate a time series. Um, um, so let's get started. So the first thing is to generate a study site, okay? Um, and I'll activate this. So we'll uh, we'll use uh, the um, global uh, countries database. Uh, that way, we'll um, access um, you know countries boundary, and then this is variable countries. We can create that variable here, um, e um, e or origin feature collection, and then you you'll provide that um, um, image collection uh, or feature collection ID. Rather, uh, you can get this from Earth Engine. And then you can specifically fill that filter by um, any country. In this case, I'll use an example, Ethiopia here. Uh, and the next step is to actually um, import the uh, evapotranspiration data set, uh, which is an image collection here. I'll create a, a variable called ET here. Um, and so this is the image collection ID for the evapotranspiration data. And it's it's a a, la a large time series a, lo a long time series data and it's a global data set so I'll filter by this timestamp. Technically, the start of my timestamp is twenty fifteen, January first, and then the end of my timestamp, um, my image collection timestamp is twenty nineteen. So it's about um, you know five years of data set, right? And specifically, I'll um, Select the variable that I'm interested in within this image collection since it has multiple uh, layers. Um, so I'll, I'll select um, ET, which is evapotranspiration. Okay, so now I have my image collection here. Uh, I can go ahead and run this script. And the next step is to actually um, create a, a time series using my region of interest, which is 
here. Um, and let's create a, a chart, a time series chart using um, UI chart um, Earth Engine built-in, you know, uh, function. In this case, I'll choose actually uh, DOI series by year. Uh, so this is a built-in Earth Engine function which uh, gives you a time series uh, plot um, um, uh, grouped by year. So for every year, you'll have a different color um, line. And so I'll provide here my image collection here and um, my region of interest here. This is the region of interest study site. And I'll use uh, EE reducer mean. Um, so technically, we'll summarize the, the data um, for, this, uh, for, for this study region. Uh, by calculating the mean within that study area, right? And then a pixel resolution is 500 because we've said that the modis, um, the um, data, the, 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 the special resolution of the data set is 500. So I would choose here the special resolution and then print chart. So if you um, execute this code, you'll, you'll see a time series plot by year on the right side uh, console here on Earth Engine. Let's go ahead and execute this. All right, so Earth Engine is now computing the um, you know chart uh, here, um, so it might take a little time uh, since it's a computationally intensive um, analysis. Um, so let's just wait a few seconds here. So once we have uh, the plot, the Earth Engine plot, um, you know, we can see the time series here. Excellent. All right, so we have our um, um, time series um, data set for this evapotranspiration. So um, you can see we have, actually we can um, maximize this. If you click this, it will just give you um, um, a full window um, screen so that you can you can look at your time series data. So you have here day of year from zero to three sixty five here, and then here's the um, evapotranspiration, um, you know per per each you know date stamp right, and then here on the top right side uh, we have the different years. Um, 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 assigned by different colors 2015 uh, and then red in 2016 so you can see the different years right for example here uh, 2019 we have pretty you know higher uh, evapotranspiration by the end of this the season or the, the end of the year right so um, so maybe uh, there, there it was a pretty warm um, uh, warm season uh, during this part of the year in 2019. So it's pretty a nice way to kind of understand interannual variation in terms of evapotranspiration in this case, but you can apply this in, in various examples, like you can uh, plot precipitation, you know, temperature, um, uh, you know, many other geospatial and physical um, land surface parameters. And the beauty of that is just in Earth Engine, they have updated, you know, the, this plotting function it's pretty cool now you can export the csv if you want just a table you can um you know generate this exact one in python or r if you're you know python or r savvy instead of earth engine or just if you want to change some of the, the layouts here you can also download the png of this exact image that way you can use it in, in your presentation uh, or whatnot. So you can simply download, like download PNG or CSVG, and then you can use that in your, um, you know, publication or whatnot. So overall, um, that's how you can generate a time series of evapotranspiration data for any year or any study site um, around the world. Uh, uh, so um, this is just to give you a, you know, an example how you can apply this. And if you're interested. In, in different years or a different study site, you can simply modify this code and just generate um, a time series plot for your own area of interest or year.